In this video, I'll demonstrate how we can prepare a powdered sample for a TM using what's called the drop casting technique. Before we begin, we do want to be working in a fume hood because if we're dealing with nanoscale materials, they can be harmful to human health. In the remainder of the video, I won't be working in a fume hood because I'm actually using non-toxic materials. Now, our first step with drop casting is to create a suspension. So we'll want to grab a glass vial and your sample in powdered form. Then we're going to put a small amount of the sample into the glass vial. Um, I have a metal spoon here. You can use other materials, which I'll talk about in a second. But you can be very precise with this. You can measure out your powdered material. I usually just eyeball it because I kind of know at this point what it should look like, the, the end result. So this is a decent amount of powder actually for what I typically do for my suspensions. So we put it in there. Now, sometimes you run into issues with repulsive forces, especially within the fume hood. So you can also use a toothpick or a glass rod if you have that. Whatever works. Just get the powder into the glass vial as best as you can. Now we're ready to add the solvent. And you can use different types of alcohols, methanol, ethanol, isopropyl. Um, DI water is another option. I prefer to use methanol usually. It dries rather quickly. You do want to work in a fume hood with methanol though because it can be toxic. Now I'm just using some other liquid here that's visible. And we put it in the glass vial. You want to try to avoid touching the vial um, with the pipe pad if possible. So I put in a small amount of solvent. You do the amount that's necessary to get a mostly transparent suspension. So once we have the powder and the solvent in place, um, we want to mix it up so you can shake it like this, or better yet, use a sonicator if you have one available. So you'll just need to follow the instructions for your sonicator. After shaking or using a sonicator, we want to let the glass vial sit for a few minutes so that the larger particles will settle out because for TM, we don't want any visible particles from the suspension that we're sampling. Then we're going to grab a piece of filter paper and a clean TM mesh grid. An empty grid box is useful too. So then we will use some sharp tweezers to handle our grids, put an empty grid onto the filter paper, which I've already done. And then we're ready to actually do the drop casting. So we'll be putting drops on this grid. And you can use a standard pipette, but I prefer to use one that has a bit more control like this. Now you're just going to put the pipette into the suspension, and you really want to just be sampling the topmost portion of it and avoiding touching the vial again. So once we have enough to do a droplet, we put one drop on the grid. Make sure that it soaks into the paper. Sometimes with DI water, if that's what you're using as your solvent, you'll need to do a few drops for it to soak into the paper. Ideally, you do one drop and then move the grid to a dry, clean part of the filter paper. Now, I tend to do three to nine drops, just depending on the material I'm working with and the suspension itself. But you run through that, and then once the grid has dried, put it in your empty grid box. Now, I typically will create a few grids of the same sample with differing amounts of drops. Once you're done with your drop casting, you're going to go ahead and put your sample into a storage device. We have vacuum desiccators. You also may use a desiccator that has nitrogen in it. You just want it to be inert so that air isn't interacting with your sample. So I typically have these sit overnight, dry out under vacuum, and then they're ready to look at on the TM. So that's the overall process for drop casting. And now you can try it yourself. 